thank you for joining me today. Uh, my name is Silas Kaufman. I teach in the uh, design department and today I'm going to be going over a uh, design uh, drawing in ink and we'll be talking about various line types and how to communicate effectively and create a solution for your client. Uh, this will be sort of more of a corporate illustration that I'll be uh, dealing with here and uh, it's, it's a solution for a client so I need it to communicate very clearly uh, what it is that they're trying to uh, uh, promote. So uh, I'm going to talk at first here just about the tools that I'm using. I like to use uh, throwaway uh, technical pens uh, just because uh, uh, they do a couple of things I do like. One of them is uh, they dry out. A lot of uh, uh, people, once the marker starts to dry out, they will throw it away. I like the markers when they're, uh, I like one that's fresh and I like one that's drying out uh, because the drying out one actually offers me a sort of better mid-tone line whereas the, the fresh marker will offer me a, a much darker line, so I want uh, one of each. And then I also have on hand a brush pen, just in case i got to darken down a, an area relatively quickly. Uh, the brush pen is, is, a, is a great tool to get a nice black, but yet still offer a little bit of texture uh, to uh, feed into the lines that I'm creating. And so one of the things that I want to go over with you uh, in the start here, and I'm just going to use a scrap sheet of paper, uh, is... And I got tape all over. You know, that's uh, part of design. A lot of tape. Because I'm just going to demonstrate some basic lines before we get to our, our major drawing. So, so we are uh, we're going to look at uh, you know just a basic uh, line. Now, one thing that students uh, do is they they tend to do lines that are really heavy. I want you to think about lines very lightly, okay? So lightly that they skip around and break. Okay. We want to think a bit more about texture. We want to think about shape. We want to think about value. So we want to look at line differently. So most students will do a contour line and they will use it as such. So that it is just way too strong. We never really want with one of these illustrations to start out with a very strong contour line. You want to think of contour line as something that is uh, akin to uh, cartooning. Which is, a, which is a different language entirely. And it's, it's, it's a great line for that. But for this, we're looking to create a sense of light and a sense of place. So it's best if we uh, pull our lines along and just skim them along the page very lightly. That's what I'm going to be doing with this. Now you're looking at a fresh pen. Let's demonstrate what it looks like with a pen that's drying out. Now hopefully you'll see that if I start making lines with a pen that's drying out, I get a nice mid-tone. So that's not a very strong line. But I'm still able to build up value in a different sense. So I get two, one that's strong and directional. I can go in with my mid-tone line and begin to play and create different value. Now this is called a, just a basic hatch that I'm using. It's just a one direction sort of scratch. Then I can switch that up to a cross hatch over top and I can go in multiple directions. And this is usually the basis of how I tend to uh, draw. Now there is the, I can come in with a broken line. I like broken line. Just start to break the line up. That is the line that I tend to use when I initially contour or something. I like to break my line. So let's take a look here at what I am drawing. Uh, I'm drawing uh, three people and a sign, essentially. So what I want is I want these two people to be interacting. I want the child to be responding to this. So I need this direction to this item here. And I'm going to have a sign up here stating what it is that this product is. All right. So I need to value key this. That means I need to have uh, value, tonal value, support each other. So I have the child, I have the woman, and I have this other woman, and they're in a uh, shopping center, and this woman, uh, woman is promoting this product. So I need these things to be seen clearly. All right, so I have five areas that need to be seen clearly. The rest is all essentially staging. Now to create that uh, staging, I'm gonna highlight and create focal points of each one of these characters. Okay. And we know that in terms of acting or staging, uh, faces are what we look at first, primarily the eyes first. Then we're going to look at mouths uh, second. And then we're going to look at shoulders and hands. 
and this sign is going to be over top. So what this sign is going to do for us in this position is going to create a sense of uh, balance or a fulcrum point in which we create this scaling to these other two faces. So we have this triangular composition here. And then down here, the kid's going to act as a counterpoint to that. Okay? And so I have him right along this uh, sight line and this person across on that sight line. So that's how I've composed it. To compose this, I created uh, an initial uh, drawing uh, based on my reference material. So this is just a strong key line sort of value take on the staging and setting and how I want it to play out. Now this is something that I would email off to the client and say, is this fine? What do you think? And they give me the go ahead. And then at that stage, I begin, I just, I just essentially lay the drawing underneath and I begin to draw over top. Now I do have reference uh, on my uh, laptop that uh, uh, guides me through this. So right now I'm focusing down here on the, uh, the kid. And I'm going in a, just a up down hatch because right now I want to provide value around the kid. I don't want uh, too much uh, of my line work to interfere with the kid just yet. So I'm not going in there in a step. I've just got a really light broken line around the, the kid. And I'm going to come in off the other lines that I've established with my dry pen. And I'm just going to start to create value. That's what I want to build up. Now I use these other lines and I come off them and I switch in different directions. Typically I just start with a hatch, right? Now it's delicate work. You need to be precise. You need to have a awareness and sensitivity. Uh, you need to stay with the drawing. One of the things that I do find hard right now is to talk and teach while I do a demo. So uh, there might be moments here where I have to just pause and think about what it is that I'm doing. So just allow me that, because uh, this is a job that will go to print. So I have to be aware of my craft while I build this up. It's an important part. I don't want too much confusion around the, the boy down here. So uh, when I look at my reference, there is a lot of other material going on through this scene. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill that down. I'm going to gray it out. Uh, one way to gray things out, if you look up here, I have these products along here. Now those products, because they're a high key value, meaning they're, they're close to white, uh, that's going to become a, that's going to begin to interfere with this focal point. Now I want air, all my value around that focal point to go back into that space. So one thing I to do that, uh, I'm going to take my dry pen, and I'm going to go around and just take the value down a bit. Now you probably won't notice it right away. It takes a, a few strokes to build up. Uh, this value, but essentially what I want to do is I want to keep this area page white and I want this area in the background to be about a 30% or higher gray. Now keep in mind to create interest in the drawing I want a mix of values. I want blacks, I want 80% grays. That creates interest for the viewer. I also want a little bit of the complexity of the staging of these products just because those are things that the viewer will begin to identify with, right? So I'm just going to bring that value down. You'll begin to notice right away that the hands become a little bit more sharper once I've uh, done that. So I'm just going to go along here and do that. Now you notice that that was a cross hatch. Some of these are just straight hatches. Also notice I'm not afraid to go through line work, okay? This is one thing that students, when they begin, they're scared to do. They just think, oh no, I just did all this fabulous detail. How could I possibly want to go through line? I mean, that's something that I was taught from a young age, not to cross through contour lines. Well, in this case, when we go and take value and cross through the contour lines, we're actually uniting that background, okay? It's areas such as these hands or these faces that I want to avoid that unification to that background because I want those things to stand forward in the staging. So I'm using line to control the value and this controls what we look at, how we read this, and it controls the communication. Okay. 
So yes, I understand this is not a very expressive drawing, but there are different types of drawing for different purposes. You know? So this one communicates one thing, and we want it to communicate quickly. You know, the viewer doesn't have a great deal of time, uh, and they need the message brought to them fast. So that's part of my job in terms of what I get paid for here is to provide this solution, to go out and find uh, people and, you know, create this staging. Okay. Now, as we get down to this kid here, you know, this is a complex area. We got this shopping cart and whatnot. I want to darken down inside here. So you, you can see that I have a nice row of hatching being built up here. One thing with hatching is you never want them all to be ending in the same location. You want a little bit of a rhythmic build to that finish. So I'm starting at the same location. I'm starting off this hang line above it, and I'm pulling down into this space. Okay? Now it's going to get a little bit tighter as I approach this shopping cart. So then if that is the case, I'm going to reverse and pull off that shopping cart. Okay? I don't want to be going to it because that doesn't allow me control. I want the control of pulling off that line. Now it might appear a little bit rough at first. You notice that my dry marker, what's great about my, my, my little dry marker is, is it still has enough ink in it that I can just pull a little harder and I can get that value a little bit denser. Okay. Now a big part of this is a narrative or a story is being told just in a single snapshot, right? So, you know, we have all this going on. We have this uh, play amongst the characters. It's something to think about, you know, in terms of, you know, shopping with your kid. Uh, parents are uh, going to know that quite often kids are distracted. So I want my kid to help play out this idea that uh, this product's important and interesting. So the kid, the kid acts as a nice counterpoint to that. And parents, of course, will identify with, gee, if my kid is interested in this, it must be an interesting product. Um, and so therefore, I should go to this location and check it out, right? So I'm just going to get in behind here. Now I'm going to begin to vary these lights and darks in behind here. If they get too similar, you want to bring in some variety in amongst your lights and darks. That's just reality of uh, the world uh, that we live in. Is it has variety within the values. Okay. Now I want to draw your attention over here. We have the mother, and on this hip here, I have this area where I want to darken down because I know that her uh, her sweatshirt is going to come around this hip here. And so we want to structure that hip. Now I'm just, I'm adding lots of value here. So really it's just a lar large area of density of crosshatch line. You know. Over here I came in with my brush and I brushed the four of her shirt. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to this part, the high point of the hip. So we need to understand our anatomy so we've got the four of the pelvic area here, crossing the pelvic bone, and we're coming to the hip and how it pulls into the pelvis, and that's going to jut this area out. Okay. Now really, I don't need to get too detailed in terms of the drapery of this. I want it to be black. I don't want a large amount of drapery. Drapery, of course, is always pointing to areas of tension, right? and how it circulates across and something like that. I'm not going to deal too much with that just because if I put in that amount of detail, it's going to take away from, you know, the areas that I want to communicate. So once again, I'm just adding directional tone play. I'm going to darken it down as much as I can towards this handle because that becomes a nice value key there, right? And I'm going to come back to these pants, and I'm going to start to do the same. I, once again, I don't need a lot of detail in this area because it's not something that really concerns me with the read. One thing I do have to watch is back here because that's a, a location where I might need to put further staging. I might. So I don't want to uh, get too dark. I might just leave this around a 30%. And then that, that allows me to make choices over here if I want to darken down the back part of this pant and lighten this area up so I support that. Notice also that this hand is very bright against that dark, so that becomes a focal point. 
equal amount over here with this, well, not an equal amount, but a similar amount is done to this hand here, okay? So now we uh, go back to the, to the, the kid. Now I need to keep darkening down through here because I want to begin to build up his face. Now you'll notice that his face will become clear as I add value around it. I don't want to think about uh, darkening down lines along his face. I want to just darken down the background because so much about drawing uh, isn't really the line, it's the value in the shape. Okay, those are the things that we read clearly. Now, one problem I'm having here is you'll notice that I got this shopping cart coming down here and it's a shared line along his face. Now, this is a very important area of expression. Suddenly I've got a line that isn't going to support the value of that face. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna have to deal with that now. So I'm gonna darken this down further. I'm just gonna add a little bit of black there. So we have our first little problem in this drawing. So I'm gonna just fill in this little area here just so I get a sense of what I need to deal with. Darken that down, go in here, darken down. I need that happy sort of smile. And we're gonna come out here. Okay, so now that shopping cart is becoming problematic to the background. This, this is something that occurs all the time when you're doing this type of drawing. So we want to just stabilize our darks around this kid. We're going to come in and deal with this. So I, you know, it looks now like a line has gone into his mouth, so we don't want that. So I'm going to use a, a, a cross contour line over this shape. Let's begin to darken that down. And bring out this kid a little bit more. He looks a little goofy. All right, so we'll leave it uh, somewhere in that area. I don't want to do too much of this cross. I guess if I got some cross contour here, I need to pull it up. Because if I just leave it down here, it'll begin to ghost this image and it'll begin to attract attention to it, almost like you've made a mistake. So I'm now going to pull that area up there too. One thing that students do is they'll often build too much value around a white form and then that looks like it's ghosted or it feels like uh, it's drawing attention to itself. So I need these values to begin to pull away from that figure. So I need to add lots of value to other areas and keep that value consistent. So I'm going to need some value up here. See how if I put the value up here, it pulls it off, our, our view off that mouth. If I begin to add value up here, it begins to make a little bit more sense as to what I'm trying to do. I'm going to add some here. Even though this shopping cart, pull some line through there. Okay. Oh, I got a lot of cross contour lines. So it's, it's almost like all these lines are beginning to point at this guy. So I need to keep my lines somewhat more consistent. And we'll begin to darken down some of these whites. And when, when we just allow him to be the white area, then he creates that focal point. All right. Now I just keep building this up and developing it as, as I see fit. I do want to keep some of these whites. I might need a little bit of contour line here along some of these lines, just because I'm getting little flecks of white. So that just gives it a little bit more structure. And then, you know, if I'm, if I'm really concerned about it, I'm thinking like, well, that's, that's it. that area is very confusing. I'm going to just come in here and I'm just going to add some counter lines with my dry marker. That usually helps blend it all back. Just push that form back into that stage, staging effect, and allow the drawing to come forward. Now, I would just keep this going. I'll go over this little line a value here. I also want to start thinking about things like how much time am I spending on this? Like I don't want to spend too great a time fighting with it. That's why I just concocted these methods of adding value rather quickly. 
because really, I, I, if I spend too much time working on detail, then I'm not really uh, being too economical in terms of my pay. <laughs> Um, but that, that's uh, basically how I would build these drawings uh, and, uh, you know, create a story and uh, use the line work uh, somewhat, you know, effectively to uh, convey that story and that message. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, tuning in today, and uh, hopefully in the future I can get some more uh, lessons to you. Uh, but uh, this is Silas Kaufman signing out from uh, ACAD uh, VCD department. Thank you so much.